on this episode of 4K Skywatching. I look back upon 25 years of different camera systems. After I've seen a couple of UFOs, I did my best to come up with the most powerful camera system I could get my hands on. So I built this over the top super camera. It had a fold out stock that came out the back with the five pound counterweight. It was made of all aluminum construction and it was heavy. It had a telescope on the front, a camera and a laser scope on the back, double handlebars with an auto record system. I could ID anything in the sky if I could see it in the daytime with this. So after a while I put it on a tripod. I got the idea from this video from California from Kevin Baker. So I copied his system. And this is my system where I had it a little bit over the top. That's what the camera I used on March 13th. It was a Super VHS camera. And you could get really good shots of the moon with this. But you had to have it on a tripod and there wasn't any cheap tripods around at the time where I could mount it. So eventually I abandoned that system and I went with the dual camera system. At, for a while I thought maybe 3D is the way to go. But at least have two different cameras. So I used it in a Bubba sighting. So from the sighting on December 1st, we geared up with uh, stereo cameras. And this next piece of footage you're going to see is two video cameras mounted 11 inches apart in an attempt to videotape Bubba in 3D. Okay, I'm gonna get the remote control. So over the years, I moved on with uh, camera systems and moved away from the big, bulky uh, super camera. Got into smaller stuff. Um, this was uh, something that superseded it for a while. It was the best core pan and tilt system. I uh, used this. Uh, this worked for about 30 sky watches, and then it broke. Uh, it has a little control system, which you can get a remote uh, 50 feet and extend that. Um, you just hit the button. And if you hear that, that's because it's broken. The motors are stripped. Uh, I believe the, the tilt up and down hasn't broken yet. Uh, how I broke it is with those two cameras right here. It's a Nikon P900 and a Sony HD camera. The combined weight uh, with both cameras, the, the best core is supposed to hold six pounds. Uh, this camera here is one pound and that one's about two pounds. But with at an extreme angle it gave out. So with this best core it's about a hundred dollars for this. But the problem is is when it breaks it's a brick. It's no good to you. Uh, taking it apart, tried to fix it, and you can. It's got proprietary gear systems and whatnot in there. I don't like that. If it's broke, um, which it will. So after months of research, I settled upon this unit here, which is built by Servo City, um, and it's made in the USA. It's a pan and tilt that would go on the end of a crane system for a Hollywood type of rig. Uh, it's really solid and it has a base which is down here. And there's these four parts which come down here. And I, for now, have it mounted to this, this piece of wood. Um, so I know I can't flip over. The piece of wood's just sitting on the table. The piece of wood was custom fit so I could put it into a cart and pull it up the side of a mountain. Uh, probably end up taking this off and putting it onto a piece of metal 
uh, with some batteries. Uh, when I first had the system, the, this wasn't able to hold the up and down. When I got to about this area, it couldn't hold. It started sloping down because the weight here was pushing down. So I upgraded this motor uh, for 26 bucks. I just undid this bolt right here, pulled it out, replaced these things here, shove it in. Um, and you got another motor and that's Kevlar belts. They probably aren't going to break. So unlike the best core, if it breaks, you bricked it. This whole thing here is aluminum, so you can machine add-ons if you want. Um, this camera is really expandable. Uh, this, this type of pan and tilt probably isn't for everyone. Uh, you don't need it if you're not going to run this many cameras. They have smaller systems for just a couple of hundred dollars um, that are designed for one professional camera. That might be the system that works for you. Uh, those, those pan and tilts are two, three hundred bucks for a smaller version of this. Uh, I would go to Servo City and check out their pan and tilt system and see if, if that's something that will work for you. Uh, I wouldn't recommend getting the best cord because it will break and when it does it's just another brick. Uh, this system I can't see it, if you're using it properly how it's going to really break at all. Uh, it's just two DC motors and some aluminum and some, some uh, pivots there. Uh, how this works is it's powered by plugging it in right there. Then it adds the joystick for a control system. The joystick is plugged in there and then you have power over Ethernet. So how this works is the power comes through the, here to the motors. So it plugs in there and then over here it plugs into this uh, Ethernet jack. Getting their power fed from here. Um, I've tried this with over 200 feet of cable and it'll send power through 200 feet of cable. So this joystick works like this and it has entire 360 degree turn in clockwise or counterclockwise and it has 360 degree tilt and without using uh, any wires you don't have any limitations if you're running off batteries on a remote system. I do have limitations because typically I'm plugged into HDMI and I'm watching this uh, live on some monitors. Uh, this has potentiometers built into the control system so if I'm if I want to slow it down to a slower speed, I can just go like that. Speed it up, really slow it down. Um, so this is superior system over uh, the best core system. Now this system was about eight hundred dollars. Uh, it didn't come with all this stuff. It doesn't come with any cameras. It just comes with the plate. Um, this other plate over here. I built because I needed to put additional cameras on so I, I put uh, a machined this area right here. It's time to talk about these night vision tubes I've built. Um, what these are is these are these uh, popular made by Lou, uh, Night Vision Lou on YouTube which are uh, night vision tubes that cost about a hundred bucks. They come from the UK and they come out of um, military tanks that used these night vision tubes 40 or 50 years ago and they're on the surplus market so they're new used and they're inside of these tubes. Uh, these aluminum tubes uh, I got from Servo City for about nine dollars and I cut them to fit. And then these um, these are Canon uh, camera mounts for 80 to 200 millimeter lens, or, or sorry uh, they're Nikon mounts but I think Canon has the same type things and with these um, with this rubber sleeve it holds this perfectly so they're mounted to this bar and they have the cameras on the back the cameras are Sony uh, CX4040 cameras they're, they don't have any night vision they're just really cheap $200 HD cameras but they're Sony's they're not like those generic knockoffs that suck you see those all over uh, Amazon and eBay um, I machined in um, this part that's pushed in there so that way you can take the lens off of one um, that's on. and that one's on. This part here is 3D printed. I three, just designed my own stuff and 3D printed it. Um, 
these lids right here and just pull out Velcro. And what I did was uh, a 3D printed box is to fit these, uh, just barely enough room to fit these uh, AAA batteries, which are 6 volt. They go to uh, these on and off switches right here, and then the wires feed through drill holes into the tube. So it's pr a pretty simple system. I uh, thought about putting a potentiometer on this one because this one's twice as bright as this one. This one's so bright I have to turn the high speed shutter on to 6000 just to uh, step it down so it doesn't overload the, uh, the camera. Here this system is hooked up uh, to this car battery so this way we can operate it remotely and I have it hooked up to this uh, converter here and it's plugged into our power and you can see that the system can easily work off a car battery uh, but if I take this out it'll be two of these small 12 volt batteries chained together. They're 17 amp each. That should give me 34 amp of power which is enough to run this system probably for t almost 24 hours straight before the batteries need another charge. And remember if you like this type of stuff, like and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next uh, Skywatch.